Take a break from your busy schedule and join Harold Sala for Guidelines, a five-minute commentary on living. They call them look-alikes, individuals who strive to make themselves look like someone else, usually someone famous, such as a movie star or a rock performer. They may look alike or even sound alike. They may dress alike, but they are not the real thing. They are imitations, some of whom are very good. They may even be witty and be a very good substitute, but the authentic article, they're not. Lately, I've been wondering if we haven't been seeing a lot of look-alike faith, too. Not exactly the real thing, but a good imitation. Like an artificial flower that resembles the real thing, it looks good and even feels good. Look-alike faith can't stand the heat when the pressure is on. Jesus told a parable to illustrate this truth, that it takes far more than going through the motions to produce the real thing. It was a story of a sower who took seed and planted it. Some of it, however, fell along the side of the road. Immediately the birds came along and devoured the seed. Scores of individuals who go to church, whose parents have gone to church before them, and who know the language, fall into this category. Their faith is like a second-hand garment which doesn't quite fit. Something left by someone else who looked good in it. But the look-alike model just doesn't have steel or a backbone. In the story Jesus told, some seed fell on rocky ground and it sprang forth only to wilt. Like the individual who grows discouraged not being able to cope with the accusations of friends and associates who accuse him of being too religious. Other seed fell among thorns, which quickly grew up and choked the seed. A picture of imperfect faith not fully formed. Like the ear of corn that has been picked before it could mature and be completely formed. The pressures of the real world are too demanding, the cost too great. And individuals in this category eventually relinquish or give up their desire to know God. But some seed fell among good ground and brought forth a harvest, some thirtyfold, some sixty, some a hundred. Do you have this kind of faith? This kind, the kind that survives in the real world, is based upon the sure word of God which is unchanging. It is a solid rock upon which you can stand in times of trouble. And the more you know about God, the stronger will be your faith. And the more you know about the Word of God, the easier it will be for you to trust Him for the needs of your personal life. So, where do you get this real-world faith? Certainly not by going through the routine of a religious experience. Otherwise, this kind would be saturating our world, because religion today is experiencing a rebirth almost everywhere you look. It comes through an understanding of the nature and character of God. Paul addressed this very issue as he said, Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So, the more you know of God's word, the Bible, the greater will be your faith in the living God. Dwight L. Moody, one of my heroes, a man who knew what real-world faith is about, once said, I prayed for faith and thought that someday faith would come down and strike me like lightning, for faith did not seem to come. One day, he said, I read the tenth chapter of Romans. Now faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I had closed my Bible and prayed for faith. I now open my Bible and begin to study, and faith has been growing ever since. It worked for Moody, and it will work for you too. You've just heard Dr. Harold Sala with Guidelines, a five-minute commentary on living. If you would like to listen to the program again, download a copy, subscribe to our e-commentary, or view other resources, visit guidelines.org. We would like to hear from you, too. You can email us at info at guidelines.org. That's info at guidelines.org. Thanks for listening, and we invite you to join us again for the next edition of Guidelines.